Hello and Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the 14th episode of the program Organization and Management, which is a series of program of MBA Coal. I'm your host Komal and with me I have the expert Mr. Sai Chaudhary. Welcome sir. Thank you. Uh, students, in today's episode we are going to discuss organizational change. But first, let's have a review of what we studied in the last episode. Expert, please. Here goes conflict. Conflict and organizational performance, types of conflict, sources of conflict, resolving conflict, managing individual conflict, conflict solutions, negotiation strategies, relation between change and conflict. And students, now an overview of today's program. The important points of today's program are organizational change, need for change, change and organizational politics, steps in implementing change, importance of change, change and market forces, change agents, Driving forces of change, pace of change, resistance to change, and change models. And sir, now coming to today's, uh, coming to today's topic, uh, can I ask you a question that what is the relationship between change, politics, and conflict? Actually, wherever people work together, there is politics. Mm -hmm. In organizations, there are hierarchies and uh, the managers have to use power, which we have already studied, and the use of power is politics. Now, when we talk of change and conflict and their relationship with power, mm -hmm. what actually we mean is that managers are always after the after good management mm -hmm. and they want to make uh, the organization a success they want to achieve its objectives and at the same time they have to change because the world is changing the markets are changing the customers are changing which we will be studying today and they have to gear their organization accordingly. Mm -hmm. And in this process, there are conflicts. All right. And to resolve these conflicts, the manager has to use negotiation strategies. And this is the relationship between conflict, power, negotiation, and change. And uh, expert, I assume that there is a graphical representation between the relationships as well. Actually, it's the manager who has to decide whether to change or not. And for this decision, he has first to feel the need of change. And the need of change is felt in uh, the due course of business. Mm -hmm. And uh, the manager, when he feels that uh, there should be a change, then he plans the change because what we call organizational development is planned change. As you can see, the second step is organizational change and the third step is change alters goals of different groups in the organization. This means that when the change is implemented, obviously it affects the top management and uh, the middle management and the first line management and sometimes if it is a sea change or what we call re-engineering, it changes the whole organization and sometimes there is a paradigm shift and that is also a big change. So the change affects all. And that is what we, uh, where we have conflicts mm -hmm. and where the manager has to use politics. 
All right. For negotiation and for affecting the change successfully. And I think, sir, today we are more concerned with the first two parts, that is managers and the need for change process and uh, the change process in itself. Yes, you are right, because the manager has to assess the need first, and you can read it on the slide. It's, uh, it gives you all the basics of the start of change and how the role of the manager in the change, please. Students now coming to managing the organizational change, let us see what we have to do. Assess need for change, recognize a problem exists and find its source. Look inside and outside the firm for sources. Decide on the change to make. That is, you have to determine the ideal future state. Decide exactly what the future company will look like. What obstacles need to be changed to get there. Implement the change. A top-down change is quickest. Bottom-up is more gradual. Bottom-up is more effective at eliminating obstacles. Evaluate the change. Was it successful? Benchmark. You have to compare yours to the others. Now the important points in this are that the change can descend from above that is, it could be an order from above, from mm -hmm. the top management. All right. That apparently makes it easy because people have to obey orders. Mm -hmm. But that is not the way of participative and democratic management. While bottom-up change may be slow, but it involves most of the people mm -hmm. and they have their say and there are discussions and the points are raised and therefore people feel that they are a part of the change. So it makes change voluntary. And secondly, mm -hmm. what is important is that the manager must also evaluate what will be the effects of this change. All right. Because naturally the change can either lead to success or it may lead to failure. So it is essential that the manager assesses the results also and that is mostly done by benchmarking mm -hmm. that is going backstage the other companies and see their change and the results of their change and comparing their results with ours. So the point of agreement here is that in an organization, we need to have a change and there must be certain steps in this organizational change. What are these, sir? We have uh, already discussed these steps, but let's see in their graphic representation. The first step is assessing the need for change. All right. And that depends upon the sensitivity of the manager whether he is sensitive to overall business conditions, the external as well as internal, and can feel at the right time that this is the time to change. Mm -hmm. And immediately after, he has to decide whether to go for the change or not, go because for. that is what will really uh, help us achieve our objectives but it may also change our objectives for the time being. And the next step is implementing the change. That is making necessary changes in the organization, in the technology, in the market, in uh, marketing strategies, or making changes in uh, our clients according to or responding to the client's demands. Mm -hmm. And last of all, immediately after, right in the beginning when the change is being affected, the manager must evaluate whether where this change is taking us, whether we are going in the right direction or whether we are achieving the changed objectives and uh, whether our strategy is right. So that is, these are the steps in 
the change management. Expert, you have explained it really well, but I would still want to know that why change? Why can't we do without change in an organization? It's a good question and uh, a very important one because why change at all? Hmm. Now, if we study the word of business, we'll note that whether or not we may want the change, the change is always there because technologies are changing, knowledge is spreading fast, the client's demands are changing, methods of production are changing, and uh, everybody wants more and more cost-effective methods, and people want changed designs or changed products, and the top management may want change in technology and change in human resource management, that is change in the divisionalization or the departmentalization of the organization that is making units and subunits. So it's the change all around. It's the change that is happening all the time. As you can study from the slide, Change is the single most important factor in business today. Every business is an ongoing source of change. Every professional discipline is a process of change. Every fundamental business principle directs us to change. And fundamental business principle is to change for the profit, to make the organization a success to be one up against the competitors, to capture more markets. So this is what is impelling us to change all the time. And let us see specifically what are these market forces that uh, impel us to change. Students, let's see what are market forces for change. Every market force, customers, competitors, technology, Regulations, distribution channels, suppliers, etc. creates change that forces our change in response. Globalization of markets demands globalization of businesses. Now, this has uh, specifically shown certain uh, market forces, which are important ones, but there may be many others. Here we can see these are customers because it's the customer's demands or changing demands that compel us to change. Similarly, our competitors may be bringing new products or new designs and uh, naturally we always fear to be left behind in competition. So it's the competitors also who are change drivers or compel us to change. Similarly, new technologies arise and when new technologies arise there are cost effective methods and there are uh, quicker methods that uh, increase productivity and uh, everybody would want to adopt these methods or adopt these new technologies and they may be costly in the beginning but ultimately they become cost effective cost due effect. to quicker production and uh, raised productivity of workers. And sir, it is interesting to note how globalization has affected us and how it has demanded us to change in an organization. Yes, I am coming to that. But first, regulations and distribution channels and suppliers. Now, by regulations here, we mean that uh, we are not working in a void. Every firm works in a society.